How did a hermetic Carmelite nun who'd never even seen a television end up being a TV star with an audience of millions? Having lived a life of epic contradictions, paradoxes and breathtaking divinity, today's master is sure to perplex your mind and steal your heart. It's impossible to study this master without turning to her maker and experiencing a deep sense of appreciation for the awe-inspiring handiwork that created someone so special. Today we're having coffee with Sister Wendy Beckett. That's right, coffee it is for Sister Wendy, and of course, the occasional shot of Bailey's. What was that? You heard me. The mystery of Wendy deepens yet again. But truly, I digress. Let's take a look at Sister Wendy's birth chart. Now, I couldn't find the right time, so I'm using her moon chart and a roughly rectified time of 5am for this episode. Why 5am? Well, I felt this to be strong because Ki Mahadashas and Antardashas line up quite nicely with the major events of her life. It also puts Rahu in her seventh house and Mars in her fourth house, which are just two small factors that led to her permanent settlement in foreign lands. What's more, it produces a Ketu ascendant, which works very nicely for a person who leads a contemplative life. Rahu in the seventh also helps explain the fame. But back to her Mahadasha setup. At the young age of 16, Wendy took her first steps in the world. Ma's Ketu period initiated her entry into a teaching order, the Sisters of Notre Dame. Towards the end of Ma's Mahadasha and the start of Rahu Mahadasha, she moved from South Africa to study at Oxford, where J.R.R. Tolkien presided over her finals. It was in 1950, the start of Rahu Mahadasha, Rahu Rahu period, where she netted a congratulatory first in English literature from Oxford University. She then returned to South Africa to teach for the remainder of her Rahu period, about 15 years, which makes sense from her moon chart as Rahu is located in the fourth house of home. It was the early part of Jupiter Mahadasha in 1971 which called her back out into the world on a more permanent basis, specifically during her Jupiter-Mercury period where the 3rd, 9th and 12th Lords from her rectified 5am chart became active. During this time, she moved to a Carmelite monastery at Quiddenham, Norfolk, England, where she dedicated her life to solitude and prayer, something that a Ketu Ascendant person not only can do, but truly wants to do. Then came a rather industrious Saturn Mahadasha in the early 1980s, the period where she switched from translating medieval Latin to the more practical matters of studying art and writing books. Around 40 odd books bear her name, thanks to the gift of a Moon-Mercury combination in her fourth house, which is further powered by an exalted Mars. This was the period that introduced Wendy to the world and gave us all a taste of the many gifts contained in her chart. Take here, for example, her intellectual understanding of spirituality, Saturn in the 12th house governed by Sagittarius, her musical way with words, Moon Mercury, Capricorn Ascendant, the healing sweetness of speech that came straight from her soul, Sun Venus, second house, Sattabishak, and let's not forget about this stunning exalted Mars, which came to the fore while she made a documentary series on art for the BBC. Can you imagine taking on seasoned BBC executives and insisting that things go your way? Not many can, however Wendy did just that and masterminded the format of her own show. She refused to write scripts, insisting instead upon delivering a live performance during every take, earning her the nickname of One Take Wendy. Executives, producers and the entire crew were forced to take a massive leap of faith, as per the instructions of someone who'd never actually seen a TV set in her life. I also believe it's this very Mars that gave Wendy the confidence to zig while others zagged. Wendy was never afraid to go there, or indeed, anywhere. For example, one of the chapters in her book on prayer was titled Why Aren't Christians Better People? She could find God in a Rothko, was approving of gay marriage, and offered understanding to Andre Serrano, who controversially created the piece Piss Christ. 
These facets can also be attributed to planetary energy in the humanitarian sign of Aquarius, who is happy to go against the grain. As with every master I cover, there's always so much more to say. But to Sister Wendy Beckett, who left this earth on Boxing Day 2018, I'd like to say this. I'll always remember finding your TV show back in the 1990s. It was your hand that I metaphorically held as you guided me through a world I would have otherwise found inaccessible and intimidating. Watching the musical made about your life in 2007 on a small West End stage is also something I'll never forget. And knowing that you left during Ketu Mahadasha on a ticket to higher heavens warms my heart beyond measure. Through you, I've learnt that extraordinary things come out of humble packages and that by merely turning towards God, there's true stillness to be found within the dazzling complexities of this mysterious thing called life.